All right. So now we, what we plan on doing is, you know, kind of understand how the M class CPU actually boots up. So we were on you know, the programmer's model page, which was page number 10. Uh, if I'm not wrong, yeah, page number 10. What we'll do is scroll down and talk a little bit about um, the vector table, right? So um, let me just briefly talk about the vector table. So what is a vector table? And you know why all of a sudden that comes into the picture. So we talked about the CPU having you know interrupt lines. So the question is, our original analogy was you're reading a book, which is like the normal execution that the CPU is performing, equivalent to the CPU performing normal work. And then somebody knocks at the door, which is equivalent to an interrupt. So what you would typically do is put a bookmark uh, in the book, go attend uh, to the door. And let's say you don't know how to attend to the door. So what you'll do is you will look for instructions. And let's say um, the instructions happen to be in another manual, right? Another memory location, so to speak. And you're supposed to read those, attend to the door, and then come back. So in case of an M-class CPU, the question is, when an interrupt happens, how does the CPU know where to go to, where to go and find um, you know, the code? And the answer to that is uh, something called the vector table. The interrupts in the M-class CPU, we say, are vectored. And what that means is, we have this table that, you know, in usual cases, starts from the memory address zero. And then at every four byte, you know, we have a number stored and that number is representing the address of the memory location uh, where the CPU should jump, right? So at every four byte boundary, we have a number. That number is representing where the CPU should jump. But then why have so many numbers? And the answer to that is you might have, you know, different interrupts here. Right. And depending on which interrupt occurred, which interrupt number was fired, it will pick, uh, you know, the number that is stored on uh, the offset corresponding to that interrupt number. Right. And this is like kind of a mouthful. But when we, you know, look at this in a little bit detail, let me now break down the vector table. And vector table, by the way, is important to understand how the CPU boots up. Once you get this, you will have like no problem reciting how the M-class CPU boots up, right? So this is what happens. At the zeroth memory location of this table, like the first zeroth, not first, but the zeroth offset of this table, whatever number happens to be here is treated as the location where the stack starts, right? That's how it is. The first location or, you know, the fourth address, the entry there, the number there is pointing to the memory location from where the CPU should start to fetch instructions on a reset, right? And this is related to the boot part and we'll revisit this in a while. But then starting from this reset vector upwards to, uh, to the cystic vector, the numbers are representing how the CPU should handle an exception. So let's say, um, let's say, you know, the cystic or bus fault happens. Let's say bus fault happens, right? You try to, or memory management uh, fault happens, one of those, right? Uh, let's say you floated an address on uh, to fetch some data, that address wasn't available. Uh, the you know the interconnect or the bus system responded back with an error so how should what should the cpu do the cpu will take the number that is specified at this offset from the base of the vector table 14th offset in hex it will fetch the number available here and jump to that location in memory and start to fetch instructions from there and the instructions that are available here are a recipe that the CPU can use to deal with this fault, the bus fault, right? Similarly, let's say we program the SysTick, which is a local timer to the CPU. And on the expiry of that timer, when the exception is conveyed, 
uh, the CPU will pick up the number that is stored on hex uh, 3C offset, right? Offset again from the base of the vector, uh, vector table. So whatever is the number here is the address from where it should fetch that recipe to deal with the cystic timer interrupt. Similarly, you might have UART, DMA, or the peripherals which are mapped onto, uh, you know, different interrupt numbers here, right? Let's say interrupt number 31. So when that interrupt happens, it fetches the number from here and fetches, goes to that location, fetches the recipe, executes the recipe, and then returns back. Returns back meaning it has attended to the door metaphorically, you know, returning back is essentially coming back and reading the book. Now, how it, you know, what it does to put a bookmark, so to speak, uh, that's a complicated recipe. We need, we won't discuss it in, in this series, but know that it happens, right? All right. So now we are talking about how the CPU boots up. So what will happen is when the CPU is powered up, when the software is ready to fire, what will happen is the the zeroth entry of the vector table that will be automatically put into the R13 register. Right? And remember, R13 is the stack pointer register. And given that we are starting out, like booting up, the processor will start in thread mode and in privilege mode or privilege state, and it will use the MSP. So this R13 then is pointing to the MSP where this value will be loaded. And that's what, you know, kind of, uh, that's what is mentioned here, right? So the zeroth entry then is the MSP. And the next thing that the CPU, and this happens in hardware automatically, what it does is it fetches um, the, the number, the address available on the fourth offset and loads that into program counter. And once the program counter has a number within it, it starts to fetch the instructions from the memory location, um, whatever, you know, is stored here and that is where your initial instructions are the cpu just back to back fetches instructions and starts to perform the execution of uh, you know code essentially so that is it you know the two simple things load the program counter load the uh, uh, sorry load the stack pointer load the program counter uh, from the zeroth offset and the fourth offset and just start to execute instructions. That's how an M class CPU boots up. And hopefully you're convinced about the vector table, how it works and why it's required, and also how the CPU boots. In the next video, let me just show you like a demo in an on an emulator, and we'll kind of take a look at all of these registers.